Uh, thank you very much. Let's see if this works here, because I'm finding it's not working. Oh, good. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, playgrounds, and my goal here is to get you to build more playgrounds, because I think they are one of the best things ever besides uh, time sharing and, uh, and co-op food. I, I think they're really awesome. <laughs> Uh-oh. So, um, so in uh, 1903, there was a, uh, a public park. It was the very first public park that was built in New York City in the country. It was called William Seward Park. And it was designed um, for, um, it was named after this guy, William Seward, who was the Secretary of State during the Lincoln administration. He was an ardent abolitionist, and he had a huge effect on people. Now, they built this uh, park in a place called... Uh, um, called Five Points, which was a slum in New York City. It wants me to rate the application that I just installed to run this. <laughs> um, one of the reasons why they wanted to do this was because the people that lived in this, in this park, were, in this slum, were really, really in bad shape. They didn't have any sunlight. They had sewage running through the streets. It was a horrible, horrible place. You can... Uh, it's done it again. You can, uh, you can see right here, the guy right there, uh, he's carrying a very large piece of metal. This is a, a bunch of thugs in uh, Five Points. They're going to beat the crap out of you and take your money. Um, this, was, this was endemic in this area. And when they took this park down, they did it. It was part of, the, uh, part of a social reform movement, which had this idea that they would lift up the poor by giving them access to exercise, sunlight, uh, worker protection, uh, voting for women, all sorts of things that we nowadays take, take uh, for, uh, you know, for part of our lives, right? Oh, this thing is crazy. So you can learn a lot about this place uh, in the movie uh, Gangs of New York, if you ever have a chance to see that. I'm going to speak all about Hollywood because I'm from L.A. Um, this is what they built. This is the, this is the a, a version of Seaward Park near the beginning. It's, um, it's based on the uh, work of... God, this won't do it. won't stop doing that. Uh, this is based on the work of a man named Frederick John. And Frederick John was uh, a guy in Germany in uh, 1811. He built uh, and designed the first open gymnasia in the world, in Berlin. And the idea was that he wanted to create uh, a place and a situation where men in Germany, only men at this point, could get together and work out together and play together in such a way so that they could lift their spirits and heal themselves. Germany was in a bad straits at this point in time. His uh, thoughts eventually became, became part of the National Socialist Movement, so that would be the Nazis. He, uh, he, but before that, his thoughts and his, and his writings and his gymnasia were involved in the, uh, were involved in the, uh, the revolution of 1848 in Germany. Now, when that was, was uh, destroyed, he was actually banned Gymnastics was banned, and all of his writing was banned. Can you imagine that? Getting rid of someone who talks about gymnastics. It's crazy. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. So what happened was, in, um, in the United States, thousands and thousands of people from Germany, uh, they called them Turners after the Turnplatz, which was the first gymnasium. These people came to the United States, and they came to spread gymnastics. They ended up becoming part of the Republican model of what we're going to do is we're going to allow women to vote, we're going to clean the streets, and blah, blah, blah. These guys were, in, in conjunction with the Outdoor Recreation League and other social reform movements, they actually were responsible for producing playgrounds all over the country. Now, um, these guys came into, into uh, connection with this guy, Kellogg's. Um, Henry Kellogg, he uh, was producing these uh, spas where people all over the country would go to get well from tuberculosis. Tuberculosis was running in the streets from all of these, uh, all of these slums and everything. So what people thought was, if you go someplace drier and you exercise, you'll get well from tuberculosis. So the, the thing I want to focus on here is the traveling rings. You can see right here, what he would do is he would build these rings over pools People would swing from them, and then when they got tired, they would fall into the pool. 
So it was a great way of exercising if you were wealthy. What had started as something for poor people in the slums had turned into a place where wealthy people would come and they would do the exact same thing. Now these rings, they spread all over the country because between tuberculosis and people putting them in schools, they spread all over the country. It's not very often that you find them anymore. In fact, there's very few of them left. What happened was um, tuberculosis got cured, so there was no reason for these, uh, these spas and sanitariums to be anywhere, and we had what's called the uh, system warfare uh, controversy in uh, schools where when you went to a public school, what is the best type of physical education that you can have? Are you going to have a physical education where you get to play as a team? Are you going to have a physical education where you do things by yourself? Do you do calisthenics? What do you do? One of the ways that people did it was these open gymnasia kinds of ways. Now, I'm a big fan of this. What I found was, you can learn a lot about this from the road to Wellville from Mr. Kellogg. Um, this was the last one in the country before, uh, before it was built in Santa Monica. This was the last one in the country that was taken down at Hearst uh, Gymnasium in Berkeley. They were everywhere, and then they all kind of disappeared. Um, what happened was, I told you, I, my wife tried to kill me, and I was in this terrible place. I was homeless. Really, really bad place. And so I found... Oh, got to tell you about this. This is what the rings do. You, you swing on them. This is what we do when we, when we play on them. We're just like the apes. There's kids that do this. There's adults that do this. What happened was I found myself on the beach in uh, Santa Monica with this, this set of rings, and I found this nascent community. What we did was we began playing together and sharing this piece of equipment. And here's the point. We are sharing this piece of equipment, and in that sharing, even if we're not talking to each other, in that sharing, a community is being built. When you build a playground where you have individual things that you do, or you have a playground where you have all these people competing in teams, those are different where when you have something like the rings, where you're actually sharing a piece of equipment in this open gymnasium model, when you have that, you're building community in a completely different way, and what has happened in this country is that in the 60s and 70s, we taught ourselves because of our legal constraints and all these other things not to play on things that are dangerous like this. Things that are only dangerous if you, if you don't learn how to do them. So what I want you to do is I want you to try and get the people in your community to build things like this, to build things, not necessarily the rings. I'm going to show you some more. There's uh, slackline parks. There's, uh, people that, uh, there's people that do uh, bars. They work on bars, and they, they work together in groups and share these activities. There's uh, flying rings. There's uh, slack lines. There's acro, the, the things that you were talking about. There's all sorts of ways of playing together that we as a culture have really kind of lost touch with and are now getting back into. When I first got in, involved in this, there were very few people. I want to show you this. This is our community now that we have built over the last decade that Danette is part of and that I'm a part of. This is what happens when people play together. None of us have anything to do with each other except that we help each other when we're down. We get insurance for each other. We pay for each other's medical bills. We feed each other. We take each other on trips. We do an amazing stuff with each other and all of it's based on sharing a piece of equipment in a public space and I, was healed from this horrible experience because of these people and this equipment. And I hope that all of you can find this in yourselves and in your community as well. Thank you. Yeah.